What is up athletes? In today's video, we're gonna break down the seven elements that make up a world-class serve and how you can develop each element into your serve starting today. So that the next time you step up to the line, you'll be hitting that serve with confidence. Let's go. Element number one is efficiency. This is all about exerting the least amount of stress or energy in your body while still maximizing the power and result you can get on your serve. Now, before you go try and improve anything else, whether it's your spin, your power, whatever, I want you to prioritize this first. Because first of all, most players will actually get the satisfactory serve power that they're after just by making a few tweaks to make their serve more efficient. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how fast your racket head is moving or how much of your muscles you can use, as long as it's not being properly transferred into the ball at contact, it's actually not gonna lead to MPH. And for a lot of you guys out there, you are generating enough force. You're strong enough to hit a harder serve, but it's just not going into the racket. And this is absolutely critical because if we're not actually transferring these forces into our racket, then all of that force is actually being pulled at our arm. And that's just a recipe for disaster. Instead, developing the proper swing mechanics will allow you to avoid unnecessary load on your joints, which helps to create a little bit more longevity in your overall game. So to develop more efficiency in our serve, we're gonna instead start focusing on the overall swing mechanics. Of course, after your grip and stance. And this is gonna come down to simplifying what's important and building more advanced things like the launch and turn afterwards. Element number two to developing an elite serve is power. This is the holy grail that basically every player tries to go for and for good reason too. A powerful serve will gift you with way more free points through weak returns and even the occasional ace. I mean, it's one of the key hallmarks of a high level player. Now most players can muscle the ball and add a few extra miles through sheer effort, but this usually comes at the cost of consistency and actually opens up way more threats like using your arm and eventually getting injured. So instead of focusing on your max serve speed and trying to get that to Kyrgios' level, I would instead focus on your baseline serve speed. What is the average serve speed you can achieve while remaining consistent and staying effortless. And what we found was that once you've actually started to develop these efficient swing mechanics, the very next thing you can do to improve your baseline serve speed from there is to start using more of your full body and engaging more of the kinetic chain. This involves a few things like using explosive rotation, creating forward momentum, and learning to coordinate the launch properly. And this is where that feeling of effortless serve power comes from. And it's kind of like lifting a 40 pound dumbbell. If you were to just try to lift it with like a bicep curl, then it's gonna take a lot of work. But you can easily pick it up if you're using your entire body, including your legs. Both of them require the same force, but which one feels like a lot more effort? So here's a simple drill to get a feel for this. Just start out with a few relaxed swings. I want you to imagine you're warming up for a match, just like this. And take a key notice of exactly how relaxed your arm feels throughout this swing. Now this is probably, as soon as the ball goes up, not what we're feeling at all. Instead, here's how you can stay relaxed. So start back with the relaxed swings, and instead of trying to add more power through your arm producing more force, I want you to try to add a little bit more hip rotation in the very beginning of your swing, just like this. And as you can see, we're actually keeping our same swing here, but as we start to engage more parts of our body, you'll immediately start noticing more effortless power. And this is what all of these top players mean when they feel like they're swinging without swinging, like they're generating all this power and they're doing more with less. Spin is what makes the ball curve through what is called a Magnus force. Top spin is basically the essential element that's gonna actually cause the ball to spin and dip down into the court so that despite how fast you see a lot of these players serving, the ball still stays in no matter what. And I'm not just talking about for kick serves here, we're gonna need topspin even for our flat serves if we wanna maximize its potential. A lot of the top players who are under you know, 6'4", they actually are known to use some of the most highest amounts of RPM even on their first serve. Now if you haven't developed the efficient swing mechanics we were talking about, and you're using most of your arm to generate power, you'll be limited in racketed speed, and developing an effective kick serve will be nearly impossible. And that's why the sequence of what you learn is just as important as exactly what you're learning. And once you're able to generate that initial racketed speed, you're gonna be able to make slight adjustments to your body position, your toss, and your contact to start turning that flat serve into a kick serve. 
Now we're gonna be releasing an ultimate tutorial on the kick serve, so make sure to subscribe down below and stay tuned for when that comes out. But for now, when you're starting out, instead of focusing on the advanced kick serve, I would actually recommend starting by learning the top spin slice serve because it's the most consistent, it's the hardest to return, and it's the easiest to learn. Which leads us to the next element, side spin. Generating side spin is pretty straightforward once you've developed your basic swing mechanics. Basically, if you strike the ball at an angle, you're gonna create a frictional force on the side of the ball that's gonna cause it to curve in the air. Elite servers do this by keeping their forearm a bit more supinated through contact. And on the flat serve, players are internally rotating and pronating more than on the slice. So to achieve this for your own serve, I want you to try your basic serving motion just like this. And once you're in this racket drop position, you're gonna get in this on edge position that you see a lot of the pros reach. From here, I want you to think about throwing the racket's edge up instead of rotating the hand and arm in. And finally, you'll be able to hit the most effective slice serves if you can solve a lot of these big problems like the waiter's tray or the back scratcher motion. Now, how well you can adjust your serve, whether you're going down the tee or out wide, at will is gonna determine your accuracy. This is typically what separates the good players from the very best, whether we're talking about Karlovich, Federer, Roddick, you name it. Now the challenge with accuracy is that it's affected by the contact point. And as you know, the contact happens in a matter of milliseconds. So it's very difficult to observe on the surface and even more difficult to observe with the naked eye. This is why it's critical to know exactly how your contact should look and feel like instead of just repeating some mantra in your head. We call this the contact point proprioception. And I'm gonna show you a quick drill that can help you start developing it. First, start from the service line and just alternate between your flat and slice serve. Remember, you're either gonna be throwing the edge or rotating your racket through with the internal shoulder rotation. Now from here, I want you to look up at your contact point and notice those tiny nuanced adjustments that your shoulder and forearm are making to get your racket into that position at contact. You can close your eyes and get the feel for it, open them and just readjust. Then once you start getting used to that contact point, start visualizing your full swing while integrating it all together. Now you can even use your toss to actually get a better feeling for the difference just for the time being. Let's say you wanted to get used to more of the slice serve and getting that side spin. Well, you can toss more to the right so that you can cut the ball easier. If you wanna get used to top spin and start generating a lot of that kick, then maybe you can toss a little bit more to your right in moderation, of course, and for flat serve, somewhere in between. Okay, let's say you start getting used to these different spin variations, you're liking where you're going, and you wanna take your serve even further to the next level. The best servers in the world are able to hit different serves based on the same toss, the same backswing, the same stance, everything. And they're able to keep you guessing where you're gonna hit until moments before impact. Of course, we're talking about variation and disguise. And you can see it no better than when Federer walks up to serve. One of the things that made his serve so dangerous was that he's able to vary up his placement through the angle of his racket head alone. Everything was identical. His swing, toss, wind up, and combine that with the fact that he was comfortable going anywhere in the box, you just never knew where he'd serve. So if you wanna start developing this for yourself, you're in luck because I've got a great drill to help you out with this. But you will need a partner. So first things first, stand at the service line and have your partner stand behind you while you're hitting a few serves. I want you to again, try serving with the same exact toss, backswing, and contact, except at the very last second, T. have your partner call out wide or T, so that wide. it forces you to adjust where you're gonna hit just based wide. on the last final nuances of your racket T. and shoulder rotating into contact. Into the net. <laughs> now you guys can take turns doing this, and to up the ante, you can actually start delaying how late you call it up until moments before contact. And as you start getting more comfortable with this at the service line and you start hitting your cones, then you can start backing up all the way back to the baseline. And now for the final element, the serve plus one. This is all about your recovery and the next shot after your serve. You see, most players, they just focus on trying to get that ace or trying to see how hard they can hit their serve and clock their serve on the speed gun, which I must say I'm guilty of myself. But if you're actually looking to win matches, this is not a very sustainable strategy. Even at the highest levels, it's all about how effectively you're able to attack that second ball. Focusing on your ace count is just simply too low percentage. You're taking way too much of a risk, all for just one free point. And then at the same time, 
relying on your opponent to miss is completely out of your control, especially depending on the skill of the returner. So the one area, the one area that you can control is attacking that second shot, not giving them any room to breathe. So instead of focusing on trying to ace your opponent next time, I would instead trying to elicit a weak enough return where you can get around, hit your strong forehand, and start practicing either hitting to the open court or hitting behind them and see how that turns out in your matches. And if you do that, you can start executing serve plus one plays like this. So by developing each of these eight elements, you'll be well on your way to leveling up your entire service game and actually start finally getting results in your matches. Now, if you wanna take your game even further, we're gonna to have to do a little bit more than just go over eight elements that just scratch the surface. And that's why we're excited to announce our brand new flagship program, the 5.0 Serve. This is our latest and greatest serve program packed with the most exclusive, actionable, practical, useful, helpful, condensed knowledge that we've collected from decades of experience, trial and error, and results on court that we've got with real students, all to make the science of world-class serves intuitive to learn. And guys, this is the real deal. If it looks like we've been living under a rock for the last few months, it's because we've been brewing something special for you guys. As you know, before we've put in over a year's worth of time building out our last surf program, which was about 11 hours long. And don't get me wrong, it was very, very valuable stuff. And I still recommend that if you have that kind of time to check it out. But for a lot of us students, I know we're busy professionals. We might not have six plus hours a day to train and we need something right now that's very practical that we can actually start seeing results even tomorrow. And that's exactly what we did going into the newest version of this program. We basically went, you know what? Let's get into simple cues that you can actually remember on court and actionable drills that you can follow step by step. So guys, this is it. This is the most effective serve program we've ever made. You know we don't promote a lot of stuff on this channel. We give tons of information for free. So this was just an opportunity too good not to share. And I just hope that you don't pass it up. So click the first link in the description below or the comment section. And I can't wait to see you inside. And until next time, athletes, go out, train hard, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, I think I'm icing.